To create a new employee, you simply want to click the plus symbol in your employee list. And that's going to open up what we call the employee wizard. You'll notice that you have different tabs and you have steps. For the wizard, it's required that you click the next button or the back button to navigate. So you're not going to be able to navigate per the tab. We just need to make sure that you're going through every required step. The text boxes include directions on what you need to do to fill out that field. For example, you can see for employee name or classification, you have the instructions enter the employee's name or classification and then it provides an example. So once you enter in that information you want to hit the next button and it will take you to the next step in the process. So you just want to continue to click the next button until you get to the very end. For now, I'm going to switch over to a, an existing employee that will already have data entered so you can actually see the values that we're using because you'll also use the wizard, the employee wizard, to edit employees in addition to creating new employees. So it, it's all the same process. To edit the data for an existing employee, you simply want to click the next button to get to the data that you wish to edit. So employee name or classification, this is where you would change it. Before I move on to skill level, let me address the default that you see for this employee. Any employee, when you put the default within the brackets at the end of the description, that employee will automatically be added to new projects that you create in TurboBid. And that default applies to all of your different drop-downs. So in your miscellaneous direct job expenses, additional labor, etc., if you add default exactly like it's shown here, those will automatically be selected when you create a new project. Skill level. 100% uh, is the default value. That is what you expect from a journeyman. However, if you do have an employee that is not of that skill level, you would enter in what you think their skill level would be. Uh, if you have a trainee and he's maybe half as efficient as a journeyman, then you would enter in 50%. Uh, just keep in mind it's the overall picture of what they will produce in the entire day. So if you have them sweeping, well, they, they sweep at the level of a journeyman. They can usually do that good or material handling. So it's the overall picture when you're deciding upon a skill level. But the skill level is designed to add additional labor to each estimate based upon the crew that you have selected for the particular project. So if you have one journeyman and one trainee, that trainee is at 50%, well that trainee is going to be doing half of the job, but everything that he's doing, it's taking him twice as long to do. So in the estimate, in the bid price tabs, you'll see that there's a section where it's adding the additional hours that the job will take to complete based upon the employee's skill level. Uh, next we have burden and pay rates. Now burden is going to be determined by the employee's burden group and you can see in here we have a drop down and you can select burden groups that we have in here or you can create your own new burden group. The value displayed, the burden cost, that's calculated based upon the selected burden group 
and the hourly rate that's entered here. Now you'll notice in the drop down menu you have use custom burden cost value. Use that if you don't necessarily want to use a burden group. So if you know the burden cost that you want to use, select use custom burden cost and you can just enter in the value that you wish. You can access the selected burden group by clicking the open burden wizard and you'll see on the top we have journeyman. If you were to edit any information in here it's editing that data for the journeyman burden group so any changes that you make would be applied to every employee that has selected the journeyman group and we'll get back to the burden groups here momentarily so continue to hit the next button you after you've selected the burden group hourly rate what is the rate per hour that you're paying this employee we've included a feature in here let's say you have a scenario you're you're bidding on a job that's going to last for let's say six months it's a large job and you have a pay rate increase scheduled for halfway through the project what that would mean is that the first half of the project your employee will be at a certain rate but then the last half of the project they'll be at a different rate well, you can't use the lower rate for the entire project. You're going to be losing money for that second half of the project. And same scenario, you can't use the higher rate for the, the first half because your numbers won't be correct. Your, your cost will be higher than what they actually would be. So we do have a feature in here to where you can select the date of scheduled pay rate increases the amount and then within a project in TurboBid in the project information tab you are entering the start date of the project so it knows when it's starting it knows how many hours the job is going to last it knows how many man hours per week you have with the selected crew so the program is going to have the ability to determine how many hours when that increase is going to take place how much it is and basically what it does it will make an internal adjustment to account for that pay increase and it's just going to spread it out for the entire project if you're scheduled to pay this employee a increase in pay typically that would be something that's very common for union employees uh, you would select the the date hit next you would want to enter in the amount of the upcoming increase hit next annual hours how many hours per day is this employee going to be working and don't worry about subtracting holidays vacations sick days any of that this is just overall how many hours per day how many days per week and how many months per year so that is the employee info that's just the basic information Alrighty, well thank you for your time and if you have any questions about any of this please let us know. We'd be more than happy to help you however possible. Thank you.